Hello and welcome to another Performance Architects How-To. Performance Architects is a business and technology consulting company that helps companies initiate and sustain big changes in their performance management and business intelligence environments and process. This video along with others on our channel should help provide some additional insight as you embark on or continue along your EPM and BI journey. Head over to our channel after this video or come back in the future to learn best practices, hear overviews, and take part in lessons we have designed to help you. We are focused on continuing to develop this community and we welcome any recommendations you might have for future content. Thanks and enjoy. Hello and welcome to another Performance Architects How-To. My name is Tom and in this How-To I'll be talking to you about how to build an Oracle Hyperion planning application using the Oracle Hyperion Enterprise Performance Management Architect Tool, or EPMA, found in Oracle Hyperion Workspace. I'll also talk about some of the benefits in using EPMA, including uh, managing your dimensions centrally, leveraging some of the data synchronization tools, and I'll also be referencing some of the additional features that I talk about more in my EPMA tips and tricks video found on the Performance Architects YouTube channel. I'll also do a step-by-step -step guide that walks through creating a data source and then deploying an application into that data source via EPMA using some shared dimensions I have in my dimension library. And I'll also be exploring some additional functionality related to this product. So let's go straight into the demo. Starting off, we're going to log into Workspace and navigate to our application library. And you can see here I'm going navigate, administer, and then to my application library. Now that we are in the application library, we need to create a planning data source. So I'll go Tools and then Manage Planning Data Source. I'll then need to create a new one by going File, New, Data Source. Remember, when you create a data source, you need to either have an Oracle or SQL user schema available to store the planning metadata in. So now that I went ahead and launched the planning data source creation wizard, let's go through the steps of creating one. I'll give my data source a name and then click Next and then I'll enter in some key database details. Once you've done that, make sure to test your connection by clicking this button down here and ensuring that you get a connection successful returned. Next, I'll enter my SBase server details, as you can see, so I've done it here. And again, I've tested my connection. So now I've successfully created a data source. Let's go ahead and deploy a planning application into this data source. Go ahead and navigate back to the application library and then go File, New, Application. This opens the application creation win wizard. I've gone ahead and given my application a name, and then I've clicked on the Type bar. Now that I've selected planning from this dropdown, I've presented with a whole new host of options. These include options like your application type, default currency, the plan types you're going to be using, as well as your calendar down here. Let's walk through some of these now. I've gone ahead and selected a default currency of US dollars, but you have several options down here including the euro, the pound, and the South African rand. I've also selected a general application type, but you also have the option to select something like public sector planning and budgeting. Be sure to evaluate this, your decisions well ahead of time. I've also gone ahead and filled with my time periods dimension. I've chosen base time periods of 12 months. I've started my fiscal year in January. I've started my fiscal year start date in the same calendar year. And I've also gone ahead and used a 454 distribution. Once I've confirmed that, I'm going to go ahead and select my dimensions. As you can see here, I'm using shared dimensions found in my dimension library. This includes entity, version, scenario, accounts, years, periods, alias, and currency. For currency, I'm using my reporting currency shared dimension. You also have the opportunity to specify a host of custom dimensions. These custom dimensions can also be found in your shared library, or you can create a new one from scratch. After clicking Next, it becomes time to validate your application. Go ahead and click this Validate button here to see if you return any errors. EPMA does a great job of detecting er potential errors it finds with your dimensions, so I'm going to go ahead and fix several of these. As you can see here, the period type property has an invalid value for member Q4 and dimension period. It should be set to summary time period for this member. What this really means is go ahead and select your Q4 member and change it to a summary time period. I'm going to go ahead and walk through all of these periods changes now and then validate again. As you can see here, it's validated and all those errors have disappeared. Now I have some errors with my scenarios dimension. I'm going to go ahead and fix those by selecting my start and end year and my start and end periods. 
This little wizard conveniently opens up your years dimension and allows you to multi-select from there. Once your application is validated successfully, go ahead and deploy the application. Once the application has been deployed, you'll get a completed confirmation message. Any messages or logs can be brought up here. As you can see here, my status is completed and my progress is 100%. So finally, let's just review some of the key benefits in using EPMA. First of all, you can centrally manage your application's metadata and data through a user-friendly interface. You have things like the Dimension Library to manage your changes to Dimension centrally, and then you have the ability to farm these changes out to individual applications. In brief, this means that you can create one time periods dimension and farm it out to as many applications as you need. Any changes you make to that dimension are reflected in all your applications. It also allows you to sync data between applications using tools like the data synchronization function. Again, check out our EPMA Tips and Tricks video on our YouTube channel to learn more about these features. So again, this is how you create a planning application using the EPMA Planning Application Creation Wizard. Thank you for joining and please visit our Performance Architects how-to channel for other videos on enterprise performance management and business intelligence solutions.